Welcome to the Past Life Awakening Institute podcast. I'm Mark Beale, a past life regression therapist and trainer. Each episode shines a light on healers who practice spiritual regression therapies like hypnosis and hypnotherapy with regression to this life, past lives, between lives and spirit releasement therapy. If you're interested in having personal sessions or certification training in any of these modalities, go to my pastlifeawakeninginstitute.com website for details. So thanks for watching and enjoy this episode. My guest today is Patty Bell Hastings. She's a past life regression therapist from New Haven, Connecticut in the USA and online. She's also a Fulbright scholar and a tenured professor of media and design with an MFA in visual art. A lifelong artist and meditator, she practices mindfulness, coaching, transformational facilitation, shamanic journeying, and she leads drawing and meditation workshops. She's also certified in aura, healing hypnosis, Reiki 2, and laughter yoga. She uses a basis of hypnosis and hypnotherapy and specializes in guiding inner journeys to past lives, the higher self, spirit guides, and between lives. She also offers hypno coaching with a specialization in divine finances. And you can find her at soulshepherd.love. So, Patty Bell, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Mark, for having me. I feel very honored to be here. Well, it's great to have you and great to see you again. So, thank you for being here. So, quite a lot to talk about. I know you've done a lot of amazing work and case studies with people. So, I'm eager to find out about that. Before we do get to that, I'd like to know a little bit about where you are now. So there are a lot of modalities and a lot of background and training that you've got. What would you say are the primary modalities that, that you work with and why? I would say the primary modalities that I work with are the hypnotherapy techniques of past life regression between lives, some clinical hypnotherapy techniques as needed. And then I mix a bunch of other traditional coaching and leadership tools and techniques, splash of NLP. It's really a synthesis. I call okay. it hybrid hypnosis. Okay. Okay. And so ultimately where we tend to be working with the sub and super conscious mind, what kind of uh, the main kind of issues that you work with, with all those modalities? Most of the people that come in think they have one problem and in interviewing and talking to them and then actually starting the work, we find it's actually other problems. It's other things that are involved there. I have people come in with a wide variety of issues that they think range from career, stuck in their career, to family relationships, to trauma, a lot of trauma, and that affects people in different ways but basically they're stuck in some way. And then through the interview process and getting in and starting to do the work, the real issues start to bubble up. Okay, yeah, it's interesting. So I think that's a big part of the therapies that we practice is just firstly understanding what is the correct modality to apply with that person, that issue at that time. And that's a skill that we can really underestimate. That's really tuning in to who are they and what do they need at this moment. And helping them realize a lot of, you know, we can do past life regression, but people think, I don't know what my past life is. I want to know what it is. But oftentimes people don't know what their this life is or what their real presenting issue is. So the fact that you, we, you, we can recognize that and help move them towards it is, is a really useful start. It's also, if you're doing spiritual modalities, you, people often think, well, you have to be very spiritual to do those. But do you find that or what kind of people do you find that uh, come for it? them anyway. Is it really the spiritual people or is it a broad range of the community? I think it's, I think it's really a broad range. I do tend to attract people who are, have what I'm, I refer to as spiritual malaise, okay. meaning that they're not really necessarily like on a spiritual path, but they, but they're longing, they're seeking, they're, you know, they're looking for something and they don't really know what it is. Okay. That's great. And so it's people sense there's something there, but maybe they haven't defined themselves as very spiritual people, but they can, they can discover that through the process. 
So do you find that, that people go in with certain expectations of what's possible and then at the end of it, have an expanded version of that? Do you find that? Most, um, most of the people that I see really have no expectations, fortunately. <laughs> Fortunately, <laughs> so I always exceed those <laughs> when there's no expectations. It's easy to exceed those. Um, I think the most profound aspect of this work to me, no matter what people come in for, and especially when we're talking about past life regression and between life regression, is everyone experiences an expanded spiritual nature of themselves, a new expanded connection to the universe, a completely different perspective on what this embodied human experience is. That, that makes a lot of sense. And that's the kind of thing I find as well. So going into it, what expectations do people have? If they don't, if they're a bit have some confusion, emotion going into it, not very clear, not very calm, little unconfident and not at peace, then what kind of you at your hopeful that you really don't know what you're getting yourself in for. And I find at the end of it, people and people do have those really low expectations, but can be, you know, it can be an amazing and enlightening experience for a lot of people in ways that they didn't imagine would even be possible in this world. And that's, that's sort of part of the joy in it. And so how, these, these clients that work with you, how do they find you? So you're there in person in Connecticut. Uh, you also work online. Is that right? That's right. Um, obviously, uh, during the pandemic, it's all online. But I was doing a huge portion of the work online before the pandemic. In fact, right at the beginning of 2020 was when I had set up in my, my healing studio and had just started seeing people in my healing studio when everything got shut down. So um, so it's all online now and it's just as effective. Yeah, I was gonna ask, how do you find that comparison? I spent you know, most, uh, many years doing it uh, in person. I wouldn't dream of doing it online. And it was only the year before the pandemic that I started getting into online thinking, you know, is this gonna work or not? And I was amazed how there's almost effectively no difference. In fact, in many ways, some benefits of doing it online. So. And this is sort of a little point of a debate in the community, but I think it's partly down to a level of experience and the conditioning of what you're used to. So how did you find the contrast between in-person online? Do you think online is really as good, if not better in some cases? I think it's, I think it's actually better in some cases. I never questioned it. I mean, I'm a digital person and I've lived online, worked online, led workshops online, and I started training in this online. So that never was a never a question for me, but something I've come to realize recently is that when you're working with someone and they're actually in the place that they experience the difficulty, right? So they're they're in their home or you know, someplace, they're usually in their home now um, because of pandemic, but they're in their home. This is where they experience their struggles they're suffering, whatever issues that they're dealing with, and the healing, the work happens there too. And I think that there's something really powerful in that. The only difference, you know, when I see people in person, I will actually do hands-on, incorporate the energy work into it. But I can also do that from a distance as well. So... Okay. Yeah, I think that's an important message for people to understand. I think some people are you know, late adopters or still, I mean, the one thing the pandemic has done is make people realize we, we can and have to get a lot of things on done online. And in fact, that can work pretty effectively. And I found that, that is a, a, so for people that are thinking, you know, who is the local person in my area? I can't possibly do it online. I uh, encourage you to seek out people like, We've got, you know, skills all around the world. So someone like Patty Bell is there in, in Connecticut. If you can't get there online is uh, what I've found with myself and so many students and, and fellow colleagues that online is incredibly effective and catch up and get, and get on the train because it's not going to change. 
and uh and and it's going more in that direction and it's working now so so that's a great thing to to be aware of so speak so speaking of uh your hometown tell us a little bit about where you grew up uh the culture in your town towards healing and how you became interested in healing yourself well i did not grow up in new england which is where i live now i grew up in the american south okay so uh I was uh, an anomaly. At 18, I was given a copy of Paramahansa Yogananda's autobiography of a yogi. And that was it. That's a, that's a beautiful book. I read that myself uh, in my early 20s. And it's a transformative experience, just uh, flicking those pages and getting to the end. Things are a little different after that. <laughs> yes, definitely. So, so I grew up in the South raised a Southern Baptist. I was given a uh, autobiography of yogi when I was 18. And I was like, this is it. This is the way a meditation and a meditation teacher. And, you know, shortly after that, I was initiated into a meditational path. And it was very, very hard to live like that in the South in 1980 strict vegetarian, meditating 10% of the day. Yeah, it was, it was definitely swimming upstream. Okay, yeah, I, I read the book in India, so it was pretty easy to integrate into my <laughs> lifestyle in ashrams and traveling in India. It was a little more difficult to integrate when I came back. So, so then from the South, you're initiated, but then it's how do I integrate and make this part of everyday life in, in the States? So, so what happened next for you? How did you go through that process of integrating or even going from uh, meditation into healing? Well, it, the, the starting meditation and becoming a healer, that is a 40 year gap. Okay. Or, you know, maybe 35, 35 to 40 year gap. And I was an artist, I had an art career I got into self-hypnosis, NLP, you know, other things, other technologies along the way and, you know, became a professor and really had no intention of doing this. <laughs> and then uh, life circumstances delivered some really extreme traumas. Uh, in my case, it's repeatedly having to save my child's life. And this is ongoing. This is not something in the past. This is something that occurs like last week. So in having to heal from that and, you know, using the mo modalities of past life regression between lives and lots of other trauma modalities, then I realized that there aren't that many people in the location I'm in, in New England doing these sorts of things and i felt like it was something i could contribute i think a lot of people have that meditation path to start with and i was also pretty committed to and and obsessed by or uh, lived that path for a good number of years myself 47 years before i then switched into healing but i think it's really useful to have that base so for people that are beginning on the healers path i think doing uh, a meditation path is part of that if you're drawn to it or have an interest in it uh, I'd sort of encourage uh, that. I think it works hand in hand and it really helps people as a complementary skill. Meditation is one. And so then you've got these other professions and uh, that you did. So what kind of complementary skills uh, do you feel you got from those? Teaching has all kinds of skills that come with it, as you know, as you know. And I happen to teach 18 to 22 year olds, which are the hardest audience there is, right? So, you know, moving people, you know, that are, that are that age, it's like, it keeps you on your toes and you have to practice constantly. So when I'm working with clients, it's like a thousand times easier, <laughs> You know, in the arts, being an artist, it's very improvisational. And then when you're working in hypnosis, hypnotherapy, past life regression, you really have to be able to move and flow and switch and change 
to be where you need to be with the client. Okay. So I think that improv piece is huge. People will often say they come for training and want to learn how to be past life therapists, but they may feel, you know, in my 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, a lot of people underestimate the complementary skills that they've already got. Maybe think it's a little bit too late or, but it, it really oftentimes isn't. If people have that real skill, that passion of life gives them reasons and motivations to want to heal. And then they can look back at a lot of the experience they've got and those transfer, those complementary skills become highly transferable and can really accelerate your ability to be a, a really high level healer in a pretty short amount of time. So the kind of people that I work with or that, that train with the Past Life Awakening Institute, so many of them have got such great life experience that they're able to pick up these healing modalities very quickly and be at a high level really quickly. And so that's something, you know, there's a 40 year gap between deciding to be a healer, but, <laughs> yeah. when, but when you do, you figure it out and get real good like that. And, and that's, uh, that's an important message for a lot of people. And so don't let that stop you from uh, embarking on a healer's path no. if you really feel drawn to it. Yeah, absolutely not. I, I couldn't have done this at 40. I couldn't have done this at 40. I think I only had inklings at 50, you know? It is the sum total of my life experience that makes makes me able to do what I am. Yeah. So yeah, I, I wouldn't have done it, been able to do it at 30, 40, and was only recognizing it or starting to recognize it at 50. So yeah, well, that's great. It's a great message for uh, people that uh late 40s 50s uh to yeah it's it's available. 70 you could do this at yeah i mean that wisdom you know that that life experience is huge yeah sometimes i see people with not a lot of healing experience but a lot of transferable experience and i say you're ready to train in this now sometimes i see people who have quite a, a reasonable amount of healing experience but less life experience i'm like keep doing that keep doing your prerequisites we'll meet up later <laughs> You know, so you're a past life regression therapist. Have you recalled your own past lives? And if so, how did they relate to this life? I started having spontaneous past life memories in my 20s. And the, it was clear and specific about the people that had been in that life. In that particular life, it was like Shogun Japan. And the two people I was close to in this life were friends, but they were my brothers in that life. And the whole scene that unfolded in that past life experience totally explained everything that was happening in this life. You know, not just at that moment, but our histories and our paths together. And then I had a spontaneous healing with my father. It wasn't meant to be a past life experience or whatever, but I was actually getting some body treatments done. And I basically was taken to a life review and shown exactly why my father had to be my father in order for me to be who I was. It was like, it was that, that film clip, like the story of your life, whole fast forward, and it was healed in that moment. Like all of the stress and upset and, you know, tension and difficulty went gone in a moment. And I, I ran home and I told my husband, and I was like, you're not going to believe this, but my relationship with my father has been healed. <laughs> <laughs> and he thought I was crazy, of course. And then a couple of year, years later, he said, I didn't believe you at the time, but it was true. So that's a great background. So uh, for me, one of the most fun things is to, to hear about some of the case studies, about how you put it into practice. So there's sort of theories and techniques and everything, but at the end of the day, it's a very practical approach. And so can you uh, give us a couple of case studies uh, about clients that illustrate the kind of work that you do, the approach that you take? So have you got one, uh, one client that comes to mind with a particular presenting issue and a background that they walked in with? Well, I've got one that 
didn't really have a presenting issue. No, no strong presenting issue. But in the process of going through a series of sessions, the story became really strong and really clear. And this person is also a healer, but was not completely recognizing it or seeing the path or, you know, understanding, you know, where to go with it or, or feeling the strength of it. And through the series of past life and between life sessions that we did, it just became crystal clear. There were multiple past lives, everything from the 1920s to um, the Roman period in the German forest. And the thread of the stories were all about internal strength. The end of the sessions really came to a close with very clear steps forward on the path and a strength feeling a solid strength in their work as a healer and moving okay. forward. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. So sometimes people, maybe they're reluctant to book sessions because they think I'm not really sure what I want to work on. A therapist should take you through an intake interview where they help refine it. And oftentimes we will then have, oh, now I realize what my issue was. I couldn't articulate it, but this therapist has helped me articulate it. But sometimes and it sounds like this is the second case can be that we don't have the mental clarity, but you still have that feeling that I need to do these sessions. I still can't tell you why. I couldn't consciously explain why, but I feel that we need to do them anyway. Then we hand it over to their subconscious and then that's where the clarity comes in as well. So, and you went through a number of sessions and past lives were part of it. Did you do some hypnotherapy with age regression prior to that to, to gain clarity on some key events in that particular in that particular instance, there was not a strong um, this life age regression. I've had other cases where there was very very strong this life experiences. In fact, I had one case, a uh, one client that came in for past life regression, and it became very clear right at the beginning that this was really about his childhood and childhood trauma and reconnecting with his mother, the love of his mother and some experiences that he went through. We didn't even go to a past life in that session and it was cathartic. It was unbelievably healing. Yeah, I think that's really useful for people to know because we, we even talk about, you know, do I really understand my presenting issue? And sometimes people may not know what it is, but sometimes people may be convinced they know exactly what it is. And that may be a little bit too much the other way. I'm convinced that just come in and take me to my past life and that will solve my problem. And it's like, well, let's just regress to the cause of the issue that may be in a past life. It might be in this life too. So let's not like cut that out. And if it is in this life, then we can, just as we do past life regression, we can do this life regression and apply very much a similar tools. So it's interesting, you're a past life regression therapist, and yet you're quite open to and, and ready to and able to work with this life as well. And, and do you find that by being able to do that, it really uh, enhances the past life rather than instead of taking away time from, oh, we didn't get to the past life this time, uh, and that was a negative, do you feel by getting it, it actually really enhances when you do get to the past life, it makes sense and you can integrate it more. Do you find things like that? Yes, absolutely. Um, one of, I think one of the threads that goes through a lot of the sessions that I do is dramatic healing with people in this life or people from this th life who have left this life. So healing with parents siblings, you know, old relationships, family members, and nobody's disappointed in, in that. And I think, you know, in the hypnosis world, there are a lot of people that look down on age regression, but I have found it to be a phenomenal, phenomenally powerful tool 
phenomenally powerful tool. And I think many of us, you know, go through life with these struggles with our family members. And then to have this true deep healing that sometimes we don't even think is possible is awesome. Yeah, that, I think that's really important to recognize that. I think even, you know, I'm the past life awakening institute and in this community we can, you know, we run the risk of focusing really specifically on past life regression as if there's a big line between this life and past life and they're different and they're separate entities. And I'm like, well, that's a naming convention because ultimately, you know, if we're going to be past life spiritual people, we've got to remember everything is interconnected. <laughs> And, you know, and past life and this life regression, it's regress to the cause of the issue. That's what we're doing. It can be that this life or a past life. So to me, even on the, on the past life awakening Institute within past life sessions, there's always going to be elements of this life. And we're also to, and with therapists, we're not just going back to the past life to see who was I, it's to provide a therapeutic resolution that can then be integrated back into this life. So we need to get into this life to understand some of the real issues and the causes and to bring it back to get some of those therapeutic resolutions. So I think you're one person who said to me, oh, I can't wait to get into past life aggression and hypnotherapy is a bit of a prerequisite and oh, I suppose we'll just get through it and be a bit boring. And then, <laughs> then, then at the end of the hypnotherapy course, you're like, I think I might have a bias towards hypnotherapy this life. This is fantastic. <laughs> I think you're, I think you're one of the first person to say that to me. And then a, a bunch of people have said it afterwards. I'm like, oh, Patty Bell's on to something. That's really great. Well, I, I, I think it was, you know, that, that particular client session where it became all this life and it was so healing, so profoundly healing and, you know, during it, I'm thinking, oh, well, this isn't where we were supposed to go or whatever. And then the healing was so profound. I was like, wow, uh, you know, and then you filled me in on, <laughs> on the wonders of age regression. <laughs> so now I try to make sure it's a part of everything so that we can make sure that we, you know, uncover everything in this life that we can before we move on to others. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be that we get stuck in this life or go through every event that happened in this life. They're almost sort of like touchstones where you just enough to show you the pattern in this life. And then so that when you do get into a lot of narrative detail of the past life, it sort of relates back and makes sense. And you can see repeating patterns or balancing patterns and how each life experience is talking to each other. And if you're only looking at one, you, know, you, you're, you don't have that sort of compare, contrast and understand the connections. So for people who are really into past lives at the exclusion of hypnotherapy, I'd say, don't, don't exclude it. And, and there are other people who might say for past life aggression, maybe they really, they're actually hypnotherapists and they think, well, past life aggression is a bit distant. I wanna stick with my hypnotherapy. So how would you find that you've been able to integrate and see that the past lives are actually relevant to this lives? So my client case studies. So I see the same family healings with my clients in their experiences from their past lives. So they will go into a past life. I'm thinking of, of one person I was working with relationship issues and she went through a series of past lives where she and the person that she's in a relationship with were going back and forth between being male and female throughout these. And it shed enormous light on what it is that they're dealing with in this life. Mirrors the struggles, you know, great learnings across these lifetimes. So mirrors and like you, like they were doing the repeating exactly the same thing or they were do, doing the opposite of it. They take turns and doing it. What kind of things? Yes. Some of both, <laughs> some of both. Um, but I, but it really, so they were in relationship, romantic relationship. They were brother and sister They're you know, they had traveled through in a lot of different forms. 
Okay. And how did understanding that help them uh, in their present life pattern and the issues I've been having? Well, it's made them understand some of their struggles and, you know, how to maneuver or navigate around those. Okay. So, and, and so what did they understand about their struggles? There was an early death of the partner that the grief and guilt from that experience in that particular life came over into other lives. In this life, this particular life, recognizing that they were trying to balance and rectify some of those things that they had never that they had not been able to achieve in the previous lives. Okay, yeah, that, that I think that's a real core because it can be balancing patterns or there can be complementary events, but at the core of it, it's like what was really the emotion? What was the residue? And it was strong enough that it carried over. So if she had you know, the pain of an early loss and grief, how did carrying over some of those past life emotions into this life affect her in, uh, when she met that person again? Was she fearful of losing him again? Did she feel connected to him, but also repulsed because she felt, I love him, but there's a pain, I don't wanna, uh, there's a pain connected with that in the past and then maybe in this life. So how did it affect her behavior and thought? Yeah, I think, I think that that last piece, you, ac- you absolutely nailed it. And it wasn't just for her, it was for him too. So it's almost like he didn't wanna hurt her again by being together. She didn't wanna be hurt again. What we typically find is people have those residues of emotion and they realize there's a cause that makes sense in the past life, but it carrying that over doesn't necessarily make sense in this life. And so they often find they can clear that emotion and then discover what is their reason for their connection in this life, what higher purpose is served by their meeting. And it may be just to overcome some of those residues and it doesn't necessarily mean that they resolve that and then they can go back and continue to be like this life lovers it means that we're clear and healthy and maybe we pursue a relationship with that person maybe it means with a person who's supposed to be our this life lover and soulmate when we do get to them we're healed and healthy and clear as well so does that make sense or does that is that the kind of thing you see with other people in general in your practice yes absolutely a lot of releasing forgiving and letting go. And that's not necessarily getting an outcome or a consequence with a specific person. It's about getting a general spiritual healing. That means no matter what happens, you're good. You know? Yes. Yes. And that's one of the tricks with presenting issues. People specify how they want the world to be. And it's more about being at peace with the way it actually is. Yes, definitely. Yeah, we, we can't guarantee happy endings. <laughs> yeah. um, but we can facilitate uh, enormous healing through forgiveness and completion and release and letting go. And you mentioned in your own story, you had a bit of a, a between life where you review the life that you've led and, and even remember all the life choices you took. So you mentioned... I realized why I chose that person as my father. And that was part of the the spiritual journey I needed to take. So you've had that experience personally yourself. Uh, Tell us a little bit about how you take your clients through the between lives regression modality. Well, I just had a between life regression session that I did a couple of days ago. um, That was a really beautiful experience. And, you know, generally... I start with a past life, the very end of a past life, so that it's the day that they die, just as I was taught. And then they're taken, you know, through, you know, the tunnel or white light or, you know, some transition experience to a place where they meet their soul group, spirit guides, soul council, or other members of their um, spirit team, as I call them. And the, the one that I did a couple of days ago was unbelievably beautiful. She was met by a spirit team that then took her through some healing and clearing processes that were just beautiful. 
and one of the pieces, this is the reason that I chose dot love for my URL. One of the themes I see across the experiences that I take people through are moments of deep joy, love, and light. And they come to it in different ways. In this particular way, she was being healed by her soul team. It was a beautiful, bright healing light and experiencing a sense of love to where, you know, just tears of jo joy and love are coming out. This is, I've seen this so many times, that, that unbelievable, overwhelming sense of love and healing that we don't experience so much on this plane in these bodies. And then she went through a number of experiences where they showed her why she had been in the lives that she had been in and a couple of things about possible future lives. And then she was taken through almost a shamanic experience um, where she was seeing this vast world and told that she can create whatever she wants for the rest of her life. That everything was cleared and that she can build this world and create whatever it is that she wants. Um, and it really was this beautiful clearing of all of these family issues and all of these past life issues. And then to go into this between life state where it was bliss and healing and learning and support um, and just anchoring to that so that we can take that experience back into our regular life. Yeah, that, that's great. And so that was something you did after having done a, at least a couple of past life regression sessions with her. I think that's a useful thing for people to understand. You know, sometimes people want to jump ahead to past lives and, and skip over to this life. And sometimes people, you know, read Michael Newton's book and they just want to jump in and do between lives. And it's like, between which lives? I don't know. Do you know your past lives? Do you know this life? So it's between and between a series of past lives. So, you know, I was in this life, then I was in between lives, then I chose that other past life, then I chose this life. So it's really important for people to understand their prerequisites to get the most out of it. Understand one or two of your past lives, at least really well, then you'll be able to uh, really get a lot of benefit out of between lives regression. And it, uh, so I think it's, it's useful to know that as a prerequisite, but once you've got that, uh, to have that as an additional mo modality, uh, how, mu how much do you think it adds to the past life regression process itself? I think for certain people, it is the capstone. It is really, it is a state of completion. I'd agree with you completely on that. I think it's not required for everybody, but for certain people, it's one way to really take their therapeutic resolutions to another level. Do you find people are getting incarnated on, on, uh, on other planets or in other dimensions? And, and how do you deal with that kind of thing comes up? Actually, my two first ever past life regressions years ago were on other planets. You just have to be open and kind of, you know, facilitate wherever things go. But one of them was fascinating. It was actually multiple lives on the same planet. It was a water planet. And they were a member of a royal family on this water planet and kept incarnating into the same royal family. <laughs> and the water was fascinating because it was programmable. Like it was a, it was a consciousness. It was almost like a computer consciousness that could that could be programmed. It was fascinating, but the, but the between lives, the between lives experience that I found really fascinating was the client that was a spirit guide in training, and 
it looked like we were in a past life. And I'm leading the interview as if it is a past life. And as I'm doing this, he's figuring out that he's not actually in the life. He's the spirit guide of the person in the life, which was, you know, you, you're, you're open. You just have to go with it. You have to go with whatever it is that they're experiencing. So he's, you know, being the spirit guide for this person who's having, you know, some real struggles and suffering or whatever. So I'm, I'm interviewing him as he's being the spirit guide. And then once he leaves that scene, he's taken to like his guide for being a spirit guide where he's reporting about how he did and how you know (laughs) what he didn't do I thought that was fascinating it's interesting a lot of things you can go through and you're thinking I'm following a process and going through past lives and then you realize wait a second is this on earth they're like no 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 I've been I've not been on earth for the last 10 minutes and you're like oh okay (laughs) I find this kind of thing as well and sometimes you can be doing past life regression, or even you can be like on another planet and, uh, and you're, you're talking with other beings and you're thinking, are they having a narrative where there are karmic events taking place between two karmic beings? And you start to realize these other beings are super wise. They're pretty much spirit guide or soul counsel level. So do you find that kind of thing coming up? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, I'm thinking of one where the client was a sea creature on another planet that had two blue suns and he's in this ocean and he's experiencing these enormous cathartic feelings of longing of missing that planet but at the same time feeling trapped and limited by what he could do there but also like gazing on the beauty of these two blue suns and the longing and and connecting that directly to his love and deep passion for nature on this planet. So Patty Bell, your website is soulshepherd.love. So I'm curious, what are the reasons you chose for that? And I'm guessing that's going to talk to what the key principles and therapy are for you. I didn't pick the name. My spirit guides picked the name. The dot love though came up when I was doing the search for the URL. I really believe that that's why we're here is to love, to learn to love, to love, to be loved. So I I picked that URL and it's that theme that I was talking, talking about before where it's the most common experience that my clients have when they're in a session is a deep sense of well-being, joy, and love that they don't generally experience in their daily life. So to me, this is all about love. It's all about healing and love and bringing that experience to people. That's great. We, so we started off talking a bit about, you know, what are some of the key emotions? People have guilt or anger and are confused on what their issue is. And we help them understand the situation. You're guilty because of a past life, or you're angry because something that happened, you know, when you're a kid, you're an adult now. And so we can move them towards understanding and then we can move them towards forgiveness. Like I forgive you for the bad things you did to me. And that, which is nice. It's a, this life and and past lives as well. I break the bonds of time to that. But I find there's a point where you can go beyond forgiveness because, you know, I forgive you for doing bad. It's like, well, ultimately we can get into a a non-dualistic beyond separation where we're all one, it's all love. Who am I to forgive? What forgiveness is required? I chose you as my dad to come and be a bad (laughs) guy. (laughs) By the way, you did love me and and look after me a lot. So I'm going to forgive you for that one bad thing you did. 
I will ignore the hundred good things you did. You know? And but we can easily get trapped in that, even in past life progression, even in forgiveness. But so I love that when you get to that point, and and love is just so non-dualistic, so so all encompassing, and what and you know, love sounds nice, and uh, and an emotional level, but I think it's just such a wisdom to to love as well. Yeah, and so and then there's a compassion in it, and just a deep understanding of reality. So does that make is that does that make sense? Is that part of it for you too? Oh yes, completely, absolutely, completely. Yeah. So shepherd. And the world needs more love. We need more love. Yeah. And so I'm just curious as well. Even uh, you know, you said I've I went through a long process. All my life prepares me for getting here. Um, but then there is a there's even a distinction. It's really useful to be a meditator and have a spiritual path and develop complementary skills. But then there is a line, and it's quite a distinction between even being interested in therapy and doing a little bit here and there and being a professional therapist where there's quite a lot of compassion and patience and these things involved. And it's not easy, you know, to do this kind of work. And so what would you say, what is the, what have you learned by going through and becoming a, a, a professional, like a really professional level therapist? What has that taught you and what, what has taken that extra step uh, meant for you and shown you? Well, my prior experiences, you know, in my different professional roles have really carried over nicely because now I can apply workflows and systems and organization and those things to this process so that when, you know, it's time to meet, when the session starts, I can be present in the moment and totally available to that person. That's, you know, that's the key is to be able to do that over and over and over again. Some of the people listening will be people that are interested in following the kind of path that you've got. What would you tell people who are interested in going to the professional level and doing the kind of thing that, that you've done that might inspire them or help them or even warn them or let them know about <laughs> the kind of things that are, that are prerequisites and are useful to be done? One, you've got to find a good teacher. There are a bazillion courses out there. And, you know, I come from an instructional design background. So I'm really, really picky about training and courses and things like that, which is why I just absolutely fell in love with yours. So you really want a good, strong training that's well designed well-structured, well-supported. Um, and then you just need to do the work, do the same work on yourself. I mean, I do self-hypnosis every single day, along with the meditation. I do self-hypnosis too. <laughs> and there's that point of really putting it into practice. So thank you. Appreciate those kind words about the courses that I run. And so there's a well-designed course but as you said, there's support there as well. So yes. you know, throughout this process, we've gone through a lot of case studies and, and we've talked, you know, one-to-one -one for hour after hour going through the case studies. So it's a matter of, you know, doing the work on yourself, but it's also a matter of just really putting it into practice and being brave and, and working with people. And so that's something that I sort of encourage. I teach you, here's how to do it. But I say, go do it now, write it up and tell me how it goes. So did you find that was useful, the process of, you know, really uh, putting it into practice straight away and then sort of be mentored or discussing it step by step. Do you find that was a, a really a useful part of the, the, the approach that we took? Oh, huge, huge. The confidence, the courage and confidence, you have it laid out. This is what you have to do. <laughs> now, some of us, you know, stretch those limits. <laughs> <laughs> the universe has its plans too, so we're okay with that. <laughs> um you lay it out very clearly what needs to be done. And, you know, I hear this over and over again, you know, from other people, you know, that, that train in this field, you got to do it. You got to just do it. You got to practice. You got to let go of worrying about making mistakes and you just go in there and do it. And then, you know, uh, if you have a fabulous teacher like you, then you get to, 
pick it all apart, see, you know, look at it in a bunch of different ways and learn more. And how do you find being part of a past life awakening community? In fact, I have to give you credit. You're part of what inspired me to really make sure I connect people. And so they can practice and swap and heal each other and, and put all the modalities into practice. How did you find being part of that community? Oh, I love it. I have, I have met people that will be friends the rest of my life. I'm sure of it. Yeah. All these great people that I'm working with one-on-one -on -one can get together and do some great work. So that's been a real privilege to see and to hear about. And that's such an ongoing thing as well. So, you know, we get the training, but then the journey just keeps on continuing. Yes, absolutely. There is quite a lot of hard work involved in healing. And sometimes it's not that easy. Sometimes people say, gosh, I've got this case study and the presenting issue is a bit unclear and the emotions are pretty heavy and they're like yeah they they need some healing that's why they've come to a healer <laughs> and it's like yeah they're, they're quite a difficult person that's because they need some therapy that's why we're a therapist and so uh so with all that you know there are the and then our own confidence and the challenging things and and then new things keep coming up in sessions we're like oh how do how do i deal with this part so it's not that easy but in the end, do you find that it, all of that hard work and all that patience and all of that energy is rewarded? And if so, in what kind of ways? Every session that I do, I am absolutely blown away. I leave the session so inspired and so encouraged and so energized because this work is profound. It's profound. So, you know, I, and, and you know, I've gone through an enormous amount of self-doubt. I mean, this wasn't a path that I had planned on taking, you know, and, you know, through the work and working with you and through the process, it was just like, okay, yes, this is what you're supposed to be doing. This is what you're supposed to be doing. And now every session, I'm just like, wow, I am so honored and so privileged and so grateful that I get to do this with people. Yeah, that, that's wonderful. So we start off talking about our clients coming with low expectations and they don't really know what they're getting themselves in for. <laughs> and we can exceed those like pretty easily and by orders of many magnitudes. But people who come in to learn to be past life regression therapists, much the same. I want to get some new tools. I think I can help some people. And then, and then as they go through it, uh, there can be difficulties like, oh, this is tough. And a few people are like, oh, maybe I'll just quit and do something else easier. But then they get through that hump. And at the end of it, it's like, oh my God, <laughs> expectations exceeded by magnitudes. I had no idea you could do this with humans. What a blessing, what an incredible experience to just, if I'd just done sessions like this a few times in my life, that would be, that would make it worthwhile. If I get to do it hundreds and thousands of times, that's, that's just, that's incredible. And it's a whole new world, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So. so if anybody out there is hesitating because, you know, they don't have, they don't think things are aligned or they don't have it, what it takes. I did this during a pandemic with a child who has a life-threatening chronic illness who was in the hospital four times last year in emergency situations. So if, you know, if I can do that, if I can juggle those things and make this happen, realize this, you know, I think anybody that feels the call, the pull, here's the voice to do this, needs to step through that door. Well, that's a great message and a very loving and kind one. So uh, thank you very much. That's a great one to end on. So Patty Bell Hastings, thank you very much for being on a, a guest on the podcast. It's been great to see you again. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's an honor. So soulshepherd.love. Go, go Soul check it out. Soulshepherd.love. Go check it out to learn more about Patty Bell. Thanks for listening or watching. To find out more about my guest, see the links in the description for details. If you're interested in having personal sessions or certification training in hypnosis or hypnotherapy, or regression to this life, past lives, between lives, or spirit releasement therapy, 
then visit my website, the Past Life Awakening Institute.com, for details. Thanks so much for watching or listening, and see you next time.